Hi, my name is Bailey. I'm a third year medical student currently on placement at the Rural Clinical School in Hamilton for Deakin, and I'm the Med Mentors Vice President. Um, so a little bit about my history before med school. I was a biomedical science graduate from Deakin University at the Warren Ponds campus, and I sat the GAMSAT in my second and third year of that degree. Uh, I was fortunate enough that on my second attempt of the GAMSAT, I got a mark that was competitive enough to use with my GPA to apply to med schools and was offered an interview at Deakin University in Warren Ponds. Following on from that interview, I was then offered a place at Deakin's Medical School and since then have been working through my first, second and now into my third year of that program. And then next year I'll be in my fourth and final year and that'll be at my clinical placement in the Ballarat Hospital. So this presentation today is just going to be a little bit about my journey into med school and some tips and tricks to help you further your GPA or GAMSAT and just some idea about the pathway into medicine. So the beginning for me, um, I'm originally from a town called Warrnambool, um, which approximately has a population of 34,000 people just um, down the coast. And the clinical school um, that I'm in at the moment, as I said, is Hamilton, and then I'll be moving on to Ballarat. So I did my first and second year of medicine as well as my biomed degree in Geelong Lawn Ponds, which is just down there on the map um, with the arrows. So going into med school, I think a lot of people only have this exposure to what medicine's going to be like is through TV shows like Scrubs and House and things like that that are on now. Um, and I think it's kind of weird that once you get into it, some of the similarities and differences that you see, because unless you come from a family that has a doctor in it, this is really the exposure that you've got. Um, I know it was for me at least, this is really all that I was expecting when I got into med school. Um, so yeah, there are some similarities, but there's more differences than most. It's not like this every day. Um, to be honest, med school is more like this right here. So it is a lot of study, um, a lot of flow diagrams you have to make and tables and figuring out what fits where and kind of trying to bring it all together and work out what's actually going on so that you understand the concepts that you're dealing with. So why medicine? Um, it's a question a lot of people ask when you say that you want to try to get into medicine. Um, so for me, I'd always had a love of learning about the human body in general. So I'd did biology and things like that at high school and then wanted to do biomedical science and learned about the body in that way and just the different diseases and things like that. I thought it was really interesting. Um, just love learning as well. So through medicine, you're constantly having to study and refine your skills and learn from past mistakes. And I thought that was seemed like it was going to be really stimulating. The hard part of that, though, is that you do have to work long hours. You are studying for very long hours of the day during med school and even after med school and you do have to make some sacrifices um, to remain in medicine and then to progress further in your career. It is a very stimulating job though so you're not going to have any day that's really the same as any other um, and you're going to have a lot of amazing experiences throughout your career and even just in med school itself. It's also a very team-based environment, um, so it's good if you can work in teams well, and I thought that was something that I really enjoyed, so I thought medicine as well kind of called to me in that regard. Patient interactions was a big thing for me. I wanted something where I'd actually interact with people and be able to help them and provide comfort to them, and I think that's a common reason that people like to get into medicine is just the patient interactions that you have and getting to talk to people and help them through tough times. So the other big thing that decision you have to make, I guess, looking at doing med school is what university you want to go to. And for me, Deakin was always my top choice. It's why I did my undergraduate degree there. Um, and the reason for that was pretty much during high school that any chance I got to meet a doctor and ask them about med schools, a lot of them seemed to hide, um, have Deakin in very high regard. Um, they thought their graduates were uh, just a step above a lot of the other medical schools and just had a lot more practical experience and able to integrate into the workforce a lot more quickly than the ones from Melbourne or Monash Uni. And that was kind of a big thing for me was getting the practical skills to be a good doctor when I actually graduate and start working. 
Um, the other big thing for me was Deakin is more rural, so it's in Geelong. Um, I didn't want to move into Melbourne. Um, I'm much more of a country guy, so being the fact that it was outside the city was another big factor for me. It had a big focus on rural health, which is why I'm doing my third year in a rural community. Um, I thought that was really important. And you get a lot more experience in rural areas because there's a lot less students and people are a lot more open to having students practice on them. So you do get a lot of hands-on experience being in a rural centre. The other important thing for me was that it took a holistic approach to medicine. So you cover things like public health and ethics and the law of medicine as well. And I think to be a whole rounder doctor, you want something like that so that you're not dealing with these things and learning about them all at the same time after you've graduated. At least you have a foundation knowledge of it before you graduate. And that was a big thing for me. Um, just for a time and effort thing, I didn't really apply to any of the universities that you had to do a portfolio for. Um, it just seemed like extra work. And after you've sat the gums at, tried to get a great GPA, then done all the applications, and then you have to do the interview on that. I didn't want to add a portfolio on top of that. So I just left those ones out. And it was also the closest to my original hometown and family and friends. So that was another big factor for me. So my experience so far has been absolutely amazing. Um, it has been difficult. You're studying a lot. The concepts seem to be harder than undergrad and you're away from family more often because you have extra study and other commitments to do. Um, first year was probably one of the best years of my life. So you meet some amazing people in medicine because everyone's geared towards wanting to be a great doctor. So it attracts a certain type of person to the degree and they're people that you're most likely going to get along with because they'll have similar personality traits to you. So you do meet some amazing people that you get along really well with and you just get amazing learning opportunities. So being out on placement in your first couple of years, just for a couple of hour placements, you do get some great experience in that and kind of get a taste of what your third and fourth year in your career is going to be like. Some of my best ones in my first couple of years were a surgical placement. So I got to stand in surgery and just watch a surgery happen, which was my first time, which was amazing to see how that all functions. And then GP and ward rounds were amazing. Get a feel for what um, normal life as a doctor is. Um, so I loved those placements in my first year. The social events are amazing as well. So catching up with all your friends and that, um, like a co there's cocktail nights, there's the end of year ball and things like that, where you just, everyone can catch up and, just relax a bit, not worry about having to study or anything like that. And you just get to kind of enjoy the fact that you've done really well that year or that everyone's passed and just enjoy the time that you have together there. The other great thing about medicine is you're forced to go outside your comfort zone and mature as a person. So especially in your late years in clinical, um, you do get thrown in the deep end a lot, but even in first and second year, you, it's a lot more self-directed learning and you have to learn for yourself. Um, and that becomes more apparent in third and fourth year when you don't have a lot of structure to your learning. Now being in third year, uh, I've, it's probably been the best year of med school so far. Um, the clinical time is absolutely amazing. I've loved every second. I've been spending hours in the hospital every day just because I've found so much joy in it. Um, and you get to do some pretty insane things that you don't think a student would probably get the opportunity to do. So things like suturing in um, specific areas that are quite daunting to do, like on people's faces. I've had the chance to do that in someone's neck as well. I've put some sutures in. Um, I think in my fourth week, I got to use a defibrillator on someone. Um, so you do get some pretty insane experiences. Um, that's more so for me because I'm adding one of the rural clinical schools. You get a lot more of that hands-on experience, but you do get a lot of that no matter what clinical school you go to. And as just part of being in med school as a medical student and it's, yeah, some insane stories that you get. So the first component that you kind of need to think about with applying to med school is your undergraduate degree and your GPA as a result of that. So for me personally, I hated the GAMSAT and I thought it was really difficult to get a good mark in. So my main focus was to get a really good GPA. So then that would kind of bring my overall mark up when you do the combination of GPA and GAMSAT up if I had a worse GAMSAT mark. So the higher the G your GPA is, the easier it is to then 
not do as well on the GAMS app, but still get a good overall score that is competitive to get you in to get an interview. So majority of people find the GAMS app harder than it is to get a GPA that's quite good. So I'd say put a lot of effort into getting a good GPA because then you can afford to do worse in the GAMS app. GPA is generally about 50% of the mark towards your interview. Um, so a deacon, they do 50% GPA, 50% GAMSAT, and that gives you the mark that leads to the amount of people getting their interviews. And then once you've actually completed the interview, all of those three things then get split up again into different percentages. So it's no longer 50% and 50% because you've also got the interview in there now. If you're not accepted the first time, um, my plan was at least to do honours to gain some more experience um, because you'll learn how to write research, which you now have to do as part of the MD program at Deakin. Um, and it also can help bump up your GPA in most cases. Um, so that's generally a good backup plan. If you are interested in research or you can go ahead and do something else entirely and then come back and still use your GPA from the previous year. Don't see not getting accepted the first time around as a failure though. Um, so there's going to be many videos on the um, Med Mentors Facebook page about people that attempted the GAMSAT or attempted getting into med school multiple times. And the thing is that if you stick to it, it will pay off in the long run um, and you will get accepted in the end. And you just need to see it as a chance to mature as a person and then go out, learn a new skill, learn something else, go travel and just develop. And then you'll come back as a better person and you can apply again and you'll be better for it in the end anyway. Um, things that can kind of help you in your undergrad is doing anatomy majors or a biomed science background does help you for the GAMSAT, but anatomy majors can be really good for your undergrad to then help you when you're actually in med school. I found the anatomy really hard to adapt to because I've never done it before. So kind of having that um, base knowledge in your undergrad can really help you then um, in med school and make that content a bit easier to revise for. You need to make sure that you also have a life outside of medicine. So a lot of people first year go in really hard and just try their hardest to do the best they can in med school and just completely ignore life outside of medicine. You should try and have a life outside of it. And even in your undergrad, have a life outside of your undergrad. Don't just be focused on, I need to get the best GPA possible to get into med school. Um, I did that for a couple of years, my undergrad, and it was pretty miserable years. Um, it's good to have a social life outside of it and friends and kind of keep you grounded in what you want to do outside of medicine. And it just helps you mature as a person, which can then help you in the interview later when you um, get that offer. The other big thing in the room is the GAMSAT. So the best way to do well in this is just practice, practice, practice. Um, I'd recommend that you buy the prep materials from ASA. Um, I think there's four available now. There's a new one that came out a couple of years ago, the pink booklet. I'd recommend buying all of them if you can afford them because they're the closest thing that you're going to get to a real GAMSAT and they're really good to practice with. Um, so personally, what I did is I bought all of them and then sat down and did a full six hour GAMSAT, um, not to time, just did it, um, just to see where I sat before I'd done any revision for it, or just to be looking at what section was worst for me and where should I kind of focus my study time. And then did the other ones kind of more towards when the GAMSAT was approaching, and that seemed to work for me at least. Some weird things that you can do is kind of reading classical novels quite broadly or any book that you just want to read, just to expand your vocabulary reading online analysis of them, and that can really help with section one and two with your interpretation of text, and then section two with the essays. So there is also a website um, called Quote Generator through Fraser Gamsat that you can use for section two. So it'll generate the same format of quotes that you get for your section two essays that you have to write as the prompts. Um, and that's really helpful to get practice material for writing practice essays. And then I didn't use this resource, but I've heard from some friends that Khan Academy has set perfectly the science section for the GAMSAT. So working through all the physics and chemistry on Khan Academy can be really helpful. Gold Standard on YouTube have videos that go through worked examples of all of the ASA prep materials. So uh, especially section three, which is the science section, going through and doing the prep materials and then watching those videos to see why you got ones wrong or if you got the ones right for the right reasons and it wasn't just a fluke can be really helpful because the methodology that you use to work out questions in the GAMSAT repeat each year. So 
they'll use the same types of questions or the same thinking that you need behind them. So getting used to the style of questions is the best thing that you can do. And that's why practicing those questions is really helpful. Main thing to remember is that the GAMSAT's a big day. So although it's six hour exam, prepare to be there for at least 12 hours. Um, I think this year in 2020 though, it's being moved online. So it might not be as big of a day in that regard, but for future years, it's gonna be at least a 12 hour day on site. So make sure you bring a good lunch and just have some people there that can support you if you know people that are doing it with you um, and take your lunch break as an actual break. Don't be stressing about it. Don't talk to people about questions during your lunch break or beforehand either. You'll just stress yourself out and you don't wanna do that going into a six hour exam. And don't spend too much time on questions you don't know. Just guess them and move on because you don't have time to sit there and try and figure out a question you don't really understand. Um, the science section for me was a big one. I think I still had 20 or 30 questions left by the time there was only a couple of minutes left. And I just had to quickly go through and guess them all because I spent too much time on other questions trying to figure out and understand them when I should have just guessed and moved on. Um, so definitely do that because there might be questions later that you actually understand really well. And it's better to spend your time on those where you can actually get marks rather than spending five minutes on one question that you just end up guessing anyway. If you don't understand it, just guess and move on so you can find the questions you actually understand and get those marks. Um, so that's it for me. So thank you and good luck with anyone sitting in the GAMSAT and with your undergraduates and um, GPAs. And if you get the interview, good luck with that as well. Um, so feel free to shoot me a message or the med mentors page a message if you have any questions to follow on from this but um yeah all the best thank you <laughs>